Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about how to handle acrylic paint as you move into your value scale. So let's jump right into it. Alright, so let's go over your specifications for this project one more time. Don't forget, you're painting your swatches on cardstock or bristle board. When laying them out in order to be glued down, they must be from light to dark with light being on top and dark being on the bottom. The overall size is 8 inches by 14 inches and the value scale itself will be 2 inches by 10 inches. Each swatch must be 2 inches by 1 inch and you must center the value scale on the 8 inch by 14 inch piece of bristle board with 3 inches on the right and left and 2 inches on the top and bottom. Make sure you flat from the top with the side closest to 0%. There will be no design process worksheet and make sure you measure and draw guidelines on the back. Erase all visible pencil marks. So let's talk about how to handle acrylic paint. Here I have my Bristol board and I have some cardstock here as well, my palette paper, my value scale, your Mars black and titanium white paint, a cup of water, and your brush and palette knife and some paper towels. Don't forget that acrylic paint tends to dry one shade darker. So it's gonna take you a lot of tries just to get where you want to be. But be patient with it, you'll get it with time. We're gonna start out with just a little bit of paint and pour it out onto your palette paper. So I'm gonna get a piece of this over here. You can see, okay? And I'm just gonna do a little bit of black, a little bit of white. When mixing paint, we recommend that you start off with white and add just a little bit of black at a time because if you start with black first and then try to add the white, it's gonna take you a long time just getting it down to a light gray value. Here I have my example of what not to do in painting. You don't wanna to paint too thin because then it becomes very streaky and you can also see the paper shining through from underneath it. If you paint too thick, it becomes very rigid and coarse. It's not as visible on camera, but in person, you can feel it and see it. You don't want to get too streaky. Right here, we see a nice example of where it's streaky. It's darker gray at the bottom and more white at the top. For something like this, you don't have to start all over. It just needs maybe another coat of paint. This is an example of when someone would mix their paints with their brushes. That's why we say mix your paints with your palette knife. When you mix it with your palette knife, you have a better control. Um, it blends better. And if you mix it with your brush, actually what happens is that the acrylic paint gets built up within the brush and all of it gets mixed together. So then you're left with something that looks like this. Something like this is what we're looking for. This is considered a good swatch. You can't see the paper shining through. It's not too thick, it's not too thin, it's not streaky anywhere, and it's mixed well. This is an example of a swatch that would be too small. Compared side to side, you can see that we're gonna have to do a whole new swatch for the smaller one, which means mixing more paint and trying to get the right value and just means extra time. So do it right the first time and you don't have to do it again. Another tip, make sure you paint horizontally. We don't want to see any vertical strokes for this project. That is because it'll help it blend better, have better consistency. So make sure when you paint, you paint horizontally. So let's jump into painting, how to handle that, and how to use your value scale to check your values. I'm going to come into here, and I'm just going to take some of this paint right here, start off with a little bit of white, and I'm going to grab a little bit, like literally just a tiny dab of black, and just rub that in. You can always go darker, it's a lot harder to go lighter. This is an example of too little paint. Don't be afraid to mix large batches of paint, otherwise you're gonna have to mix more later and you're not guaranteed to get the right value. So I'm gonna do a little bit more. Scrape back up again. So I have my water cup here, my paper towels here, and I have my brush. And what you're gonna to want to do is start off by wetting your brush. So just dab it in there. Let some of the excess flow off the side, dry it off lightly. This will help the paint go on smoother. You want a little bit of water in the brush, but not by a whole lot. A nice trick is if you want just a little bit of water, to just take your brush and tap the side. Don't even let it touch the water. It'll gather water that you mixed up from the side and gather in the brush, so you're not getting too much. Then I'm coming to here. I'm just gonna start loading my brush. That's why it's nice to have a lot of paint. I wanna make a decent sized swatch, so I'm gonna come into here it down, horizontal strokes. It may take more than one layer. And that's pretty smooth. I don't see paper shining through. It's not too gloppy, it's not too wet. Example of maybe something that'd be too wet is, I'm gonna make something a little bit darker so you can see it better, is for example, if I did something like this, just mix some darker colored paint, maybe something like this where you're just globbing on the water. Yeah, you're not going for that. So it still covers the page, but it is awfully thin. 
You don't want to completely saturate the paper. I'm coming to here. I'm just going to scrub my brush against the side and that will help clean it off. Dry my brush. So I'm going to do a couple more swatches here. I want to get some different values to show you guys. And let's do a darker value. So I have a pretty light value here. So I'm going to add more black. I want to go for a nice rich dark color. There we go. Decent amount of paint. Put that down there. Get a little bit more water again. Dab it off. Load up my brush. Come to here. Just gonna lay it down. This is a little on the dry side, so we get a little bit more water. It may take more than one layer, but acrylic paint dries fast, so just give it a couple minutes and then go over it with another layer, and it should be fine. So there we go. We have another value there. Clean my brush off again. If you really want to get clean, push it down the bottom, swirl it around. And let's go in one more time. I'm actually going to do just a straight black value. Do one more swatch next to it. Now on your value scale, you have the 100% which is black and the 0% which is white. You do have to paint the 0%. I don't want to see a blank piece of bristle board. Make sure you paint that with pure white paint. So now that our values are dry, we're going to go in now with our value scale and I'm gonna show you how this works. Here's your value scale. So when you go in to paint your swatches, you're painting a swatch for every single one of the values that you see here from one to 10. The way you're going to match this is using these little keyholes you see right here. So to give you a pretty broad example, this is what you're gonna do. So we can see right here that this value is on the light side. So I'm gonna to go to somewhere over here and I wanna find out exactly which value it matches up to. So here I'm gonna put the lightest one we have right on top of that. And even without squinting down, we can see that there's definitely a hard edge right here. So going back to our lecture where we saw the different lines where our eyes stopped when we squinted down because the values didn't blend right, that's what you're basically applying to this right here. Push down here and I squint down and I squint down, I can see that this does not blend into this value right here. So we'll go into the next one. Let's pull up to this next one right here. Put it right there, push down, squint down, and this one's closer than the other one, but I'm wondering if the next one might be closer than this one. So I'll take this and I'll push it over. Push and squint down, and that is probably the closest I've seen so far. But it's always good to check, so now I'm gonna narrow it down. So far as between these two, let's see if it matches this one right here. I'll push it down here, squint down, and we see that there's still a little bit of a line there, so the other one definitely matched better. So we've eliminated that one, we eliminated the white one. We'll check back on these two one more time. Nice squint down again and definitely matches this one here better. So then I would just make a note and write down that it matches a value eight. So there you go. That's one swatch out of the way. So now that we've done our light gray value, let's go and compare these here. So I'm going to come in with my value scale. When I say squint, I kid you not, you're going to be squinting so hard that everything's basically going to blur. If you do not squint hard enough, you're not going to see where it blurs from edge to edge. And one thing about these value scales is that you're gonna have an easier time telling what value it is if you're standing directly over it. Something about light and glare and things like that can affect how it looks when you squint, but it is easier if you're standing directly over your project when you're looking down and squinting at it. So let's go ahead and do this darker gray right here. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna push this right here and you should be squinting with me. But as we squint, we can see that it does not match this value here. This one is just too light compared to the one back here. Slide it over, squint down again, and that's blending pretty well. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but I'm seeing a nice blend here when I squint down. All right, so we've eliminated the one on this side. Let's see what it looks like with the one over here. And squinting down, and there's a bit of a blur, but definitely this one right here blended better. So then we can just mark off that this was a value three. Now this is black, so it should be straight up black, but let's just do it for fun. Put it there, we squint, and yep, it blends great compared to the other ones. See how much more obvious and light this is compared to the background there. So again, make sure you're squinting down for every single one of your swatches, except maybe the black and white one because those should be pretty obvious. Let's go ahead and do this throwaway value that we made earlier. So I'm gonna come into here, put this down right there, and I'm squinting down, and there's, it's not bad, but it's not blending. So let's try the one on this side. 
Squint down and it's a little bit of a blur, but let's try the one between it, see what we get. Put it right there, I'm looking right here. This is where it's gonna blend the most. If it's gonna blend, it's gonna blend right here most likely. And I squint down and that is pretty close. Let me compare it again. It's kind of between these two right here. So I squint down and I still see a bit of a hard edge, so I think it matches this one here. But this is one of those values where it's right between here, so it would probably be considered the darker side of the six and the lighter side of the five. Since we have this smaller swatch right here, let's compare it to this one too. Might as well practice, right? So we can see that it is lighter than this one here. And this one here before was a three. So let's see what this one is right here. So I put it right there. Pretty obvious, even without squinting, that it is not a three. So I move it down and I squint. That is not blending as much as I want it to. So I move it down just one more. Squint down. And that's a pretty solid looking five, but let's check it against this right here. So I'm going to move it right here. Squint down, and there's definitely a hard edge, so we can say confidently that this one right here would be a five. Don't worry if you have three swatches that range from light, mid-tone, and dark within one value. Because what we're going to do is that on your final, where you lay out your values from 10 to 0, we're going to try to choose the values that work best to make a nice, consistent, even jump all the way through. Now, one common error we see from students is that when they go in to paint their values, the values in the mid-tone region tend to get a little too similar. Like we said, we want a nice consistent jump between all the different values. We want from 1 to 10 to feel completely different from each other. That's where squinting and comparing is going to come in. Yes, if you have the values too similar, they're going to blend great. But that's because they're too similar in value. We want to see a nice consistent jump, so make sure you're squinting hard to just compare one to the other. And that's all you need to know for this video. I hope that was a help to you, and I'll see you guys in the next video.